What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and today we are doing an enemy tier list because everyone likes tier lists, right? So we are going to rank all the enemies in a way that it's all personal bias, right? So the way I think in terms of how cool they are from design or how fun they are to fight or how well they're designed or how bad they are, just their kits and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff in the criteria, but it's all opinion, right? So. I'm not going to have background footage this time, so I decided to put my face in the corner, give you something else to look at, so normally when I record and it's just audio, if I mess up, I can just cut audio, and no one can see it, but now you get to see the jump cuts, so that's cool. But I have all of the enemies, no bosses, I have all of the final mission bosses, not bosses, final mission enemies are on a line past the buffer line, I'm going to double check, make sure everything looks good. It does! Okay. Yeah, so I have the buffer line, and then everything else is in that tier that I'm going to move up into other stuff afterwards, after I get through the regular stuff. So I just don't want to spoil anything, just in case people can beat the game. So, we're going to start with the enemies that can appear pretty much anywhere. There are some spaces, like, I think Crimson Court, like, the bandits can't show up, but that's whatever. And then we're going to go by region after that, so I hope you enjoy it. And we're going to start with... The, the Cultist Brawler and Cultist Witch. I'm going to do these two at the same time. These are two S-tier enemies. And I'll tell you why. So, they are pretty simple in terms of how they play. The Cultist Brawler just hits things. If you put him in a rank 3, he stumbles. That's pretty cool. He always moves when he does stuff. The Cultist Witch has a pretty strong stress attack. She marks. And then also we have the ability to push and pull our people around. So that's interesting, and the fact that their kits work that way, especially because like Cultist Brawler has bleed and mark synergy, means that even though they're just regular enemies and they can appear anywhere, they have some random synergies out there with other enemies. So in the Wield, for instance, where Mark is a big deal, and to an extent the Warrens as well, the Cultist Brawler can show up and punch things for mark synergy, and that's pretty cool. So the enemies also, these two, are, I feel like, the basis for a lot of the other enemies, especially Cultist Witch. I feel like every stress caster that is not her is based with her in mind. So I think she's a very good mold to build out of. So I like these two quite a lot. The Bone Rabble, just not threatening, pretty boring. It just hits you. <laughs> you can get the Bone Branch Smackdown mod if you want. It's not a bad enemy by any means. It's supposed to just be like the generic level 1 skeleton that you just, you know, kill in two hits. So that's fine. I guess if you want to think of it that way, it does its job pretty well. It has some little blood on the club, so I'm going to put it in B. Because we have Bone Branch Smackdown. Those are two Bs, so therefore I guess it is B. The Gargoyles, I'm going to put in C. These are just stupid enemies. They have a lot of prot. They have no HP. They're unholy. I think they can appear anywhere, but it's like super rare. And then their attacks, like the Cleave Claws and the Tail, I think the chances are so low on the chance to affect someone that it never seems to really happen. Unless I've just been very lucky for five years playing this game, then maybe they're all base 140 a champion, I don't know. But they feel pretty weak and they don't show up enough and they're like stonework and you can use the Sculptor's Tools or whatever to do bonus damage, but that's... It's not good. They're not fun. They're not frequent. They're just kind of crappy. The ghoul. This is another S tier enemy. And I hate the ghoul. So I'm just trying to show that at least my criteria, for lack of a better word, I'm trying to see the merits of the ghoul. The ghoul is very well designed. It might have too much prod at 40%. I think maybe 30 would be good for the ghoul. But it has three attacks that are very devastating and terrifying. And it's got just enough life to where it's very hard to burn it down in one turn. But it has, like, just few enough life to where you can actually get through it in two turns with a stun. And you have a 50-50 to stun it in most cases, unless you're stacking a bunch of stun or have, like, a cultist, for instance. So, it's an interesting enemy. It goes down to mark. It goes down to anything that reduces protection, so even weakening curse. And the Skull Toss is absolutely obnoxious. The Scream at you and get a disease is probably the worst part about it besides the prot that it has. And then Rend is just a strong move. So this thing is very threatening, but it doesn't feel oppressive. And it's, it's a good design. And it's visually pretty cool. 
Big Bandit is going to go into C. I don't like Big Bandit that much. It's got a cleave attack with the whip. It does some stress with the cleave attack for some reason. It's got punishment to hit whoever it wants to. It's like a short range whi uh, whip, but it can hit like anything it wants. And that's odd. And then it has point blank shot that lowers its speed. And it's like, it's already super slow anyway. So congrats on confirming that you go after Crusader. It's like, it looks good alongside the other bandits. But otherwise, it's just pretty boring. In a lot of cases, it's got like a couple bleed attacks. It does stress for some random ass reason, and I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Sword Bandit, this dude's a solid B. He has quite a few interesting moves, so I think, I forget which can hit where, but it feels like he has a ton of reach, and then he has the cleave attack up front, so I'm not a huge fan of cleaves. You can probably see some kind of theme here, like every enemy that can cleave is B or lower right now. Unless you want to count the scream from the ghoul as a cleave, but there you go. So, he, he's cool. He looks good alongside the other bandits. Gunner Bandit is also B. It's just a big cleave enemy, and that's fine, though. It keeps them threatening, and the fact that it's frail enough to where the cleave isn't obnoxious. You can actually get through them in, like, two hits pretty reliably, or one really good crit. That's really interesting. And then he stealths later on, which actually makes him a lot more threatening. So he's guaranteed to get like one or two extra shots off, unless you have some strategy to like cleave into him with blinding gas or something like that. So I think that giving the gunner bandit stealth was probably the best way to give it a power increase without just giving it more damage. So that was actually very smart on Red Hook's part. The wolf bandits, I'm gonna put them also in B. I'd almost put them in A. They still have the same design, right, in terms of kits, but they visually look very awesome. So they, there's a case for them to be A, just because of visuals alone. And it's nice that the bandits get a little bump at the end of the game. So these are basically level 6 enemies, and I like that quite a bit. Madman, I was going to put an A, but Madman's actually an S-tier enemy. He is obnoxious. I really hate fighting this thing, kind of like the ghoul, where... The Madman is super fast, it's super evasive, it can actually drop you some really good trinkets, which are, you know, super rare, but the reason I like the Madman is because the sheer presence of this enemy, because you know you can get rid of him in like two hits pretty reliably, sometimes three, but it's never a guarantee if you're going to hit him because he's so evasive, and then he's fast, so he's always going to get like one or two attacks off against you, and I... I like the feeling of the pressure the moment this thing shows up. It doesn't matter what other enemies I'm fighting. If Madman is on the field, this is target number one in like 99.9% .9 of cases. So I like the attention it commands. I like the, the threat that he has. And I like that he's fragile enough to where as long as you hit him two times, he goes down, but sometimes you can miss, and then it's even more frightening. So I just, I like the feeling of fighting this character. The Magus, these are just stupid enemies. I think they're, was it, they're beast type or whatever, and they show up everywhere. It's called Maga, but there's two of them, so what's up with that? And they can stun, stress, and disease you. These would be a little more interesting if they could show up with other enemies that weren't spiders. Like, if they could be, like, the snail from the cove and just mash into other archetypes, it wouldn't make sense for them to do it. The cultists, it makes sense. The cultists never show up with the bandits, but the cultists will show up with anyone else, which is pretty thematic. But the the maggots themselves are just pretty boring on their own, so I don't, I don't want to put them much higher than that. They're just terrible, honestly. The spiders, I think you have to rate these together. They're both A tier. So I like the idea of the spiders. The low level versions are probably the most threatening, and this teaches the character or the player uh, very early that enemies will have synergy, and if they get synergy, you are in trouble. So the spiders, no surprise, have marked synergy. The red spiders aren't guaranteed to go first, which I kind of like. They're only plus one speed to the green spiders, so I like that there's still the chance for them to not get their speed in the right orders. And then you get the pretty devastating attack of web out of the red spiders where it stuns you it marks you it can hit every rank and i believe it lowers your blight resist with a debuff that is freaking nasty so then the green spider follows up with like a natural 14 damage non-crit spit afterwards and then blights you it's so crazy and these things are like if you were low level they are run killers if you're playing torchless they're always dangerous so the spiders very cool design 
All right, it's time for snakes. The Viper C tier. It's pretty boring. It's stealth. This thing wouldn't even be a threat if the Rattler didn't guard it. The Rattler is... I think it's A tier, actually, which is interesting. The Rattler... Whenever I fight snakes, this is the one I care about the most, and it's the one I pay the most attention to. I feel like once these are gone, the fight is over. It doesn't matter what the other snakes are. So unless people are a Death Storm, these are the biggest threat to me. So the spinning Viper snakes aren't as threatening, and the Rattler snakes are pretty dangerous. They have a lot of life and a lot of prot, and they can repost and guard. Very interesting. So the big snake is also... See, I'm going to make it bad. I hate the big snake. I like the design. Actually, for, for the design alone, I'm going to put it in C. But honestly, its moveset is pretty boring. It stuns you. It has two heads. That's kind of cool. And I think it blights. But it can also heal. So it's like... The, the best thing about the big snake is when you are in the shield breaker mechanic, the big snake will heal itself and stall. That is actually the biggest and most threatening thing it has about it. So when you're fighting them outside of said mechanic, the snakes are more tame, less threatening, except for the rattlesnake. The rattlesnake actually maintains its threatening status, but the big double head snake that you fight later on, this thing just... It gets so not threatening once you're outside of the mechanics. So I don't like it that much. The bone... Was this bone sergeant? This guy's okay. I really, for the longest time, didn't know that this thing was different from the bone rabble. Especially for the first, like, few months I was playing the game. They just look so similar. I'm like, oh, this one has a sword. This one has a club. They're just aesthetically different, but they're actually different enemies. The bone sergeant getting to stealth is actually kind of obnoxious, so that's another case of just giving a unit the ability to stealth, making it stronger instead of giving it like more life or more prots, so I do like that change, but I just don't like this enemy too much. I'm not a huge fan of enemies that just hit you for solid damage, but also the game does need those types of enemies, so it's a solid B, and it's interesting enough. I like the ruins enemies quite a lot, so I'm just going to leave them there. The shield... Skeleton, also a B. Shield Skeleton, kind of a cookie cutter type enemy. It just, it guards, it stuns, it hits you. And I think, I think the Axe Blade attack, doesn't it like lower your movement resist or something like that? So he can follow up with the shield, so he gets his own synergy, which is pretty cool. But this guy, his biggest threat is the fact that he can stun you at some really bad times and move you out of position. So sometimes he just gets like a crit stun on rank 2, pushes your vessel up to 3 for instance, or knocks your cultist back to three and stuns him. Both of those instances are pretty obnoxious. So you just have to make sure that he is being controlled, and when he guards someone, you're not going to just get completely screwed by it, especially if it's like Bone Bearer. The Bone Courtier. This dude is honestly S. Yes, the Goblet Bros, they are very meme-worthy. They are cool-looking, they are fun, and even though they are jerks in terms of being the super fast stress caster type of enemy, I like that the bone nobles, courtiers, whatever they are, I like that when you put them up front, they just use their dagger, they can't move back, so it's actually an effective way of getting rid of them. I also like that they have very, very low HP comparatively. They have way less HP than a cultist switch, so for a stress caster, they are very brittle, and a hellion that high rolls, especially on darkest, can usually take one out with Iron Swan, or sometimes if you get a crit, if you're on Blood Moon, you might need a crit, or just double tap it, and then you get rid of it. So I like that they're fragile enough, but also threatening enough at the same time, where it's kind of like Madman. Once they're on the field, you have to take care of them. It also drops you an interesting trinket. I forgot about that, so I like that quite a bit. The Crossbow Skeleton, this is a C tier enemy. It just, it's moderately fast, it shoots you, it has like weird... Like, a strangely high crit rate, it feels like. I don't think it's out of the ordinary, but, like, it does seem to crit quite often. And that's got Bayonet Jab, so it can move back. Yet, Arbalest in the game can't move back with a move, so I don't know what Red Hook was doing to us. They gave the enemy the ability to move back, but not our archer, so that kind of sucks. It's, it's an interesting enemy in terms of just filling out the Ruins roster, where just more soldiers and stuff. But it's pretty boring overall. The spear guy, this thing, it's also C, right? 
It's weird. Either it does, like, Spear Thrust for nothing, or it does Impale for, like, three crits, and you just hurt and cry. It looks cool. He's not common enough, I think, to be interesting. He shows up pretty randomly. So, if he was more common than he was, I think it would be more interesting, but he's not, so I don't like him that much. The Bone General. I... Is this A? I don't think it's A, just, it's too, god, I like the idea of the Ruins enemies, but they're just too vanilla sometimes. So the Bone General, I'm going to put in B as well, and the reason is, he has a cleave, he's beefy, he has armor and prot and all that, he's pretty hard to move, so that's interesting, but the, the thing I do like, which is why he's not in C, is the fact that he has synergy with himself, he can do the, I think the crushing blow, which I believe lowers your stun resist into the cleave, which stuns you. So he does have a kind of one-two punch deal, and I like that quite a bit. So it'd be interesting if you could fight two at the same time outside of Endless Harvest, because then they synergize with themselves, but they can't. So since it's just one, he doesn't really have anything else going on. He doesn't benefit from the rest of the, the bone team. Like The other ones do have some kind of benefit being around each other like the the shield ones can guard the the crossbow ones or the courtiers for instance but the bone general just hits you and that's about it the only thing he has synergy with is bone bearer but that's like everyone has synergy with bone bearer so he's not as cool as he could have been bone bearer is an s tier enemy i like the design red hook went with for this not just like the visual design but it's a dedicated support unit in the ruins, and it is very threatening, and you can't stun it. And also, stunning it doesn't even get rid of its primary threat, which is uh, reviving enemies and buffing them. So, stunning it just doesn't get rid of that. So you can't stun it, and it doesn't matter that it has high stun resist, honestly, because the threat of this dude is just the buffs that he's giving. I like that it's somewhat evasive enough, has enough prod, enough life, and stuff like that, so it hangs around for a couple turns, and it makes the player play slightly differently, so they can go, I'm gonna kill the bone bearer, and that just ends it, or I can try and bleed or crit the, or I should say blight and crit the rest of the skeletons, and then win that way. So you have two different ways to go about it, and I like enemies that encourage different modes of play. Tabbed out to check some enemy stuff, also made sure that cultist witch could mark, which I did remember, just wanted to make sure I was right about that. The next enemies are the Cove enemies, so the Sea Maggots, aka the Snails. These dudes, like, you could put them in, honestly in Bad or C. I guess they're C. So they are pretty unremarkable as enemies. They're just basically speed bumps, they sit there with a ton of prot, and they have like one move. But they do that move very well, and I like that the Brine attack lowers your speed and your dodge. So, even though it does take usually two decent hits or like two ticks of blight to get through them, or pick to the face is really good against these, especially Pierce 2, they, they're like tanky enough that you don't want to do anything to them until the end of the fight, but they're threatening enough that if you leave them alive that they can actually hurt you. So they don't do a lot of damage with Brine, but they lower your speed and your dodge, which makes the other enemies like Cove Leper hurt you pretty bad, and then they can disease you, which is really obnoxious, so I like the the aesthetic design, I like that it's just threatening enough, but it's also pretty forgettable. The Undead, or Unholy Thrall, this is an A tier enemy. I think this enemy is pretty cool, I like that the, like it only has a two turn clock, pretty much, and the gargle grab hits kind of hard and stresses, and then it just nukes your team after that. And the first time you get nuked, it is freaking terrifying. And then <laughs> the sheer terror that the player faces, if for some reason they can't finish this thing or stun it on turn two, is pretty interesting. Because it doesn't matter if your team is really good at doing damage or you have stuns and stuff like that. You just have to miss this thing once and it's going to nuke you. And that's terrifying. Because <laughs> it always makes the player a little bit worried and spend maybe extra resources controlling this thing or killing it. I think that's pretty fun. It's also an unholy enemy in a different region, so it's interesting because it's not like um, the ruins, which is just the unholy heaven, pretty much, if that even makes sense. Like, unholy heaven, would that be hell? I don't know. But the haven, the place for the unholy enemies, 
and I like that unholy enemies are in different spots, so it gives Crusaders something to do, and I think that's pretty interesting. Plus, it can show up in, like, any spot in the enemy team except, like, rank 4, and I think that's pretty fun. The Jellyfish are honestly... Like, they're C, right? They're C. They're threatening, they're obnoxious, they're fast, they die easily. I... I just don't like the fact they can disease you with one of their attacks. I believe they can, so I'm gonna double check real quick since I have this open. But I'm pretty sure the bleeding one, right? No, they both... Both of them can disease you! That's so stupid! I hate that! Like, it stuns you and gets more chances to disease you while it bleeds you out while stunning you. The kit is really well designed. It looks cool, but it's... It's obnoxious. I really hate enemies that can stun me. Like, I have Ghoul up there just because Ghoul's a jerk. But I think Ghoul's pretty well designed. It's like an intense fight. But I really hate enemies that can stun me. Maybe that's bias. The Cove Lepers... I think they suck. I really hate them. No, I can't put them there, right? They're Cove Lepers. I, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't do that. They're B. So, they are, like, threatening enough. They're very dangerous, especially, like, an Apprentice or Torchless. They're very dangerous. They can hit just stupid hard, which is why I call them Cove Lepers, but they're Pelagic Groupers or whatever. And in Veteran and Champion, they can pull you out of position. So, they're dangerous. They're very dangerous enemies. And even though they can just do two things, they can hit you and they can move you, it's a good makeup for making a threatening enemy because of how good their on-hit damage is. Plus, they're never out of position. It's like, do I want to put them up front and get hit for a dumb amount of damage, especially if they crit me? Or do I want to put them in the back and then they disrupt my party position? You have to make that choice. So I guess that can make them be... Uh, I don't like their design too much aesthetically. They're just like big blue dudes. And I don't know. That I guess that's it. The... Pelagic Shaman. I'm going to put him in A. Pelagic Shaman would actually be an S tier unit if Stress Wave always hit two enemies, but it hit for like 12. I think that would be super fun because we have so many Stress Casters that only hit one thing or they just hit the entire team. There's very few things to do in between. I think Crone might and Virago. And then we have Shaman. So Shaman can hit two people. He can heal. That's very rare in terms of enemy support that they can heal and he can buff. So this guy is pretty obnoxious and very, very threatening. And then they stealth later on. So the pink fish, as I affectionately call them, this is like the benchmark for your speed on your units like Plague Doctor and Grave Robber. You have to be able to go before this dude consistently because otherwise it gets harder to control him. Although sometimes you do want to go second because that way you can kill him on turn three. But it's, it's interesting. It's very dangerous. And I do like the look. He has a lot of color in the the makeup whereas pelagic groupers are just like blue or teal or whatever and then the jellyfish are just blue so this one does look a lot cooler than the other cove enemies the pelagic guardians i'm going to put in c they're pretty boring they bleed you they have a ton of prot they guard i mean they're dangerous enough they're they got too much hp i think actually compared to the bone soldiers that have the the shield like, those guys can guard, they can get up a bunch of prot and all that, and they're, you know, they're dangerous in a different way. But the Pelagic Guardian just has too much HP. I wish it had, like, maybe 40 a champion. Like, what, the, uh, what does it have a champion? I can go back. It's like 50-something, right? Or is that just Blood Moon? Okay. Yeah, so, at champion level, it's 51, and then 62 on Blood Moon? That's way too much. Thanks, dogs. Ruining my takes, but you know what? I'm gonna keep it. It was just for a second. Uka crabs. This is why you take bleed resist to the cove. It's not for the octocestus or the jellyfish, even though those are valid reasons. It's for Uka crab. That is why you take bleed resist to the cove. You do not want to get hit by the eight point arterial pinch or the ten point at champion. Very dangerous. Interesting. Just huge. Kind of like Meyer lurker from Fallout vibes type of enemy and then it can stun you it only has two moves it does them very well and they show up in teams and do like they have different threat levels depending on what's with them like if they have a shaman with them that's buffing them and healing them they get way more dangerous 
or if they have like two groupers behind them pulling you out of position so you have like him title slamming you into the back and then the groupers pull you up front and then he title slams you again that kind of stuff it's interesting what happens with this enemy depending on what its teammates are so i think it's cool i like the design squiffy ghast a tier so the ghast is another thing of just like a, a very fast slightly evasive stress caster those start to get boring because like the game already had a bunch of those and then red hook just put more in like with the ghast and i think that was kind of a missed opportunity the thing that's coolest about this unit the reason it's not like b tier is the fact that it apparently only targets jester if jester is present and i think that's freaking hilarious it's like some kind of musician duel between the two of them and i think that's a nice little touch you don't really know it at first but it's uh it's pretty cool but all it does is stress it's you have a chance to disrupt it, which is interesting, but it's got like too much life. It's a little too evasive and it just hangs around too long. Um, and it's just not not that fun. It's just kind of an annoyance. Compared to like Bone Courtier or Madman, where I'm like, these need to go down. If there's a ghast on the field, I usually just kind of try and hit them with like a high value stun, bleed them out slowly with my blights, and then kind of ignore them and just hope that they don't do too much stress to me. And that's about it. So I don't like an enemy that I can just like choose to ignore. And gas is kind of in that space. Next up are wield enemies. So we have the fungal scratchers. These are B. No, they're C. They're honestly pretty boring. They don't really do anything. They just sit there with like 50 prot at champion and they're just like obnoxious. And then they wait for people to give them mark and then they punch it. So it's interesting because there's mark synergy. But we already have spiders. And so we just have this big, not even big, it's just, it has so much prot. Like, why? For some reason, it just has that much protection. It's just so annoying to get rid of these things. Like, you either bring pierce, pick to the face, or bleed. You can't just hit these with leper and get through them in a swift manner. So I really don't like fighting these. The artillery, these are stupid. Okay, so these enemies are really dumb and... The only redeeming factor is the mark synergy, so it is cool that they set up the scratchers. But for some reason, like Escape Cloud, like why does it have 2000% crit? It's not 2000. I accidentally show bosses on screen, so I have to cut that. But yeah, it's not 2000% crit. It's only, it's only 12. But I'm certain there's an extra zero either between the one and the two or after the two that Red Hook forgot to take out of the coding. Because for some reason, Escape Cloud just, it crits all the time. Like, why? It's stupid, and it diseases. Why? No, Rain of Light. Why does it disease? It's dumb. The mark is the thing you want them to do. Like, mark should be the most threatening thing they do, and it's the thing you want them to do. It's so stupid. Then they have prod. They, like, they have so much prod for some stupid reason. Like, how much do they have? 30? Look at this. 25. They have 25% prod at, uh... A champion and 30 HP if you're not on Blood Moon or 29, but that's it's ridiculous. They're so annoying and they always come in pairs, so they can just spam Rain of Blight and all that. And if you don't get rid of them first, then they go up to the front and then they just spam Escape Cloud, and that is freaking disastrous. I hate it so much. Dogs, dogs are annoying in every game, so I think Red Hook actually got it right with the dogs. Like they don't live long enough to be like oppressive. They can give you rabies, which is a very good upside if you plan for it, so that's actually pretty cool. They don't do a ton of damage, but they're dangerous enough. They're fast enough to be dangerous, and then they're just evasive enough that even though they don't have a lot of life, they still hang around. The slimes, these are both bad. So they have, like, okay attack moves. I think the big one can stun you, and then the small ones can summon the big ones. The reason I hate these a lot is because when they use Cytokinesis, even if they miss, it still summons the thing. I guess that makes sense because it's like Cell Division or whatever with Cytokinesis, but it sucks. Like, it doesn't feel good to watch them miss you and then still summon people. And then they still use Cytokinesis way too frequently. It should be something like the, the Thrall, where if the Thrall is left alive for a couple turns, then it nukes you. So the slime should be, like, not super hard to bring down. And if they are alive for two turns then they summon. Like, that would be interesting, but it's not that way. 
It should be, they use like their one attack, whatever it's called, and then Cytokinesis, and then summon the big dude. Or maybe the big dude on turn four. That'd be interesting, but it's not. They can just spam summon. Like, if you can't one-shot these or kill them with repose, they're just going to summon. And it's so obnoxious. I hate it so much. And they're just resistant enough to, like, damage over time effects that even trying to go, like, a stun direction and slow them down is pretty irritating. And they, they're they dangerous. Like, they're dangerous enough that if you see them in a group of enemies, you may not target them right away. But if you don't target them first, they're going to summon. And that's obnoxious. It's not fun to fight. And sometimes if your team just doesn't have quite enough damage per turn, it's endless. It's Endless Harvest before <laughs> Endless Harvest existed, and I, I don't like it. It's not fun. And then the big one has like a thousand prot. It's, I think it's 33%. It's a little too much. Giant is a C's here enemy. I really hate Giant. The reason I hate Giant is not because the tree... Sorry about that. Yeah, so the reason I don't like the Giant... It's not because of the tree ranch hitting you for a thousand damage, which is obnoxious enough. It's confusion spores. The fact that confusion spores can miss three people, hit one, and then scramble your entire party or whatever is ridiculous. I wish it didn't work that way. It's pretty stupid. I don't like fighting it. And it has just enough life where it's always going to use confusion spores at some point. Like... If you don't chain stun it with a cultist, for instance, or kill it with Mark, or some lucky crits or something like that, it's gonna hit you with confusion spores. And if you get a bad confusion spores, it's just gonna like solo your team almost. Because it has the ability to do a ton of damage in tree branch, and then it can poison you with the uh, the spores. So it can like hit you with blight, crit you with tree branch, and then scramble your party and you just die. And that's interesting. No enemy there are very few enemies i should say that feel like they have their like an ability to secure their own kills but uh giant is definitely one of them and i hate fighting these especially because in endless harvest you get two of these at a time and it is not fun and it is very stupid crones could be better they're seeds here they're honestly pretty forgettable like they they have fetid sensor which does some solid damage i'm gonna try and like get there without spoiling anything okay crones right here so yeah fetid sensor can disease you which is like you expect the warns to disease you but you know these do too then actually i didn't realize how strong this mark was this is actually a good move okay so it marks you lowers your accuracy and your dodge i don't know why it lowers your accuracy it's kind of weird for vulnerability but whatever so the crones are like they could be better they're not they're not dangerous enough unless they get to the front and spam sensor. Otherwise, they're pretty boring. Hateful Virgo is an A tier enemy. It was almost S, but the reason it's not S is because once you know the gimmick of Virgo, it just isn't that threatening. The first time you fight it, you're like, what the hell, because it does the gimmick. I'm not going to spoil the gimmick. And like you see it, and then you go, oh my god, and then it probably kills you. Like That's how dangerous it can be. But then when you know the gimmick, it's not... It's not that dangerous. Like, you can beat it with bleed, and you're probably bringing bleed or armor piercing to the wield anyway. So, they're just fast. They're kind of like super crones, pretty much. They have, like, the same stat debuff in their mark, which I don't understand. It's just the same mark that the crone has, but it hits, like, two targets, which I think vulnerability hex can hit, too, as well, which is weird. And then you can't stun them. It's like, I don't... I don't care Red Hook, They're, the thing that makes them dangerous isn't something I can stun and stop. What I do like is the visual design of Virgo. It's somewhere in between a crone and a giant with like the growth coming out of its back. And I like that it stabs the, the fetish doll to hex you. I think that's pretty cool. Except, where did it get the hair to make the hex doll? Hmm? That's a sin, Red Hook. So we're going to move on to the Warren's enemies. The Munchworm is stupid. Like, it has Mark Synergy. It... The resists are a little too high to make sure you can burst it down or stun it or control it, which is kind of obnoxious. And if it doesn't get Mark Synergy, it's not that dangerous. If it gets Mark Synergy, it's kind of obnoxious. But it's pretty boring overall and pretty forgettable. Sorry about that. Had to take a breather there. So we're going to look at the Butcher Pig. This dude I absolutely hate. The reason is 
it it's like trying to be the ghoul where it has a backline stun and then it has a strong bleed that debuffs healing received and all that so that's kind of cool but it's like it's too tanky it hits too hard and the stun is so obnoxious that like you don't want to try and burn it down you actually can't burn it down because of the the prot you need mark at that point so you're left with either marking it or stunning it or trying to bleed it down but even in the teams that it shows up in it's like one of the most threat it's probably the second most threatening enemy in the warrens i would say it's the second most threatening i'm gonna make that hot take right now after skyver and i guess spitting pig so it's the third that, that's pretty elite company, right? It's a top three threatening enemy in the Warrens, but you never want to deal with it first. That's the obnoxious part about it, so it's it's stupid. I wish I had less prot and a little bit less life. I guess it has to have those things because then it just, you know, wouldn't be as dangerous, but it's it's not fun. I hate fighting these. Like, I, I have brought people in there with hard noggin or stun resist trinkets in the past, and it still stuns me. It doesn't care, and its crit rate is... I think pretty average, but it's still just crits all the time. I don't like it. And I also lost my best Endless Harvest run to one, uh, to one of these, so maybe that's some personal bias. Drummer Pigs are pretty... pretty boring, honestly. Like, I think it's really bad design that they have a stress attack that can cleave and then crit and then just cause more stress. I think it's really dumb. So I wish it didn't have that. It's actual... I'm gonna put it in B actually. It it's cool because it sets up Mark Synergy in the Warrens, which a couple enemies do have, so that's kinda interesting. And I do like its aesthetic design. I like that the face in the drum is the thing. I think that's really interesting. So visually very cool. And moveset, wish the cleave didn't crit, but that's it. Just tell myself now I need to start going through these a little bit faster. Hook pig, very dangerous, crit rate through the roof. Pretty easy to kill, and then it's another uh, example of Red Hook gave an enemy stealth, and then it got way more dangerous than it was before, so very interesting. And Arbalest already does pretty well in the Warrens because of Flare, and this is just another reason to take her. This thing is slow enough to where Flare actually gets value too, which is nice. Spitting Pigs are B. There's another fast, evasive stress caster. I'm getting pretty bored of that enemy type. And then it hits you with disease, so they're... They're dangerous, they die quick enough, which is nice. You know, I'm going to put it in A. There has to be some dedicated disease enemy, right? So, it's there. I think it's fair. It's good enough. It it looks a little grotesque, too, because it, like, crawls around on its own hands. Its legs are too small, then has, like, other faces, kind of like um, that cursed house in Ocarina of Time, if you remember that, with the Skullchillas. So, that's, that's cool. I like that quite a bit. The... Worm is a bad enemy. The Carrion Eater, or whatever it is. The reason it's a bad enemy... The stats are okay. It's got some prot. It's got some life. It can hit you really hard with Devour. It's got Mark Synergy. That's a decent framework for an enemy type. The reason this enemy is trash is because it doesn't have to follow its own strategy. It doesn't have to mark you and then devour you after that. If it did that every time, fine. There's counterplay. I can use flare, I can use a guard, I can stun the turn you mark me or something like that. I have options to deal with it, but this thing is stupid because it can just skip using weak and prey altogether and it can just spam devour. And it can just do that over and over. It can still crit you into like the high 20s by spamming devour. And I think that's stupid. Like it should just do its mark routine or have the drummer pig set up mark for it or cult to switch but it doesn't it can just hit devour every turn and it's dumb and then it crits you and it's not fun very stupid design the swine tar is i think it's a because i like the idea i think it's a very aesthetically cool enemy it looks interesting it's a centaur pig which i never thought of something like that so i think it's pretty funny and uh it's dangerous but it also it has a very clear game plan uh plan this is almost an s tier enemy so the reason it's a is because it's very obvious what it's trying to do it's trying to like retreat and then charge retreat and then charge over and over 
and that's pretty fun. That's fun to play around. It doesn't matter what the enemy team is. If this thing is on it, you're always trying to like get rid of the other enemies, get rid of the corpses, slow it down, maybe stun the swine it's hard at some point, or you can use like pull strats if you have like high enough move chance, and all that's pretty fun. Stuff like uh, the uh, Occultist Daemon's Pull gets good. Uh, Disorienting Blast gets good because those remove corpses, so that's another way to counterplay it. So it has a lot of options in how you deal with it. The only reason it's not S tier is because its AI is so bad sometimes that it'll be in rank 2 already and then it'll hit Trot Retreat again when there's nothing to retreat behind. So if it didn't do that as frequently as it does, I would actually put it in S because it's pretty fun to fight. Skyver is a bastard. So Skyver is an A tier enemy. This is the hardest elite enemy in the game. I know that um, Squids did not put this as the hardest, but I, I humbly disagree. This thing can like hit your team for 60 damage across three units, blight them, which is dangerous, and then it nukes all of their speed by the cripple them debuff. And that's just one move, okay? I'm gonna make sure I don't hit any bosses by tabbing out here. So yeah, even though Cripple Them doesn't have a mega high crit chance or that high accuracy, it's it's still dangerous. So the minus dodge stacks, that can be very dangerous. The minus six speed, like it bellows your team. It's an enemy, like would you take bellow that hit three people for six to 13 and did a, uh, is that a three damage blight? Jeez Louise. And then did nine damage in blight would you take that? I would. I would take that every time. It's so strong. And then you can do stuff to Skyver, like move it and stun it and stuff like that, but it's just fast enough and just evasive enough with a little bit of prot that this dude sticks around for so long. Like, you have to mark it pretty much. Mark is actually very effective against this, so you want to like maybe pull it out of position on turn one and then mark it so come hither gets very strong against this enemy. And then blow it up after that. Like, that is the best way to get rid of it. But its resists are just high enough to where your stuns may not stick. It's fast enough to where, even if you want to move it, it might get crippled them off. And then it has a stun attack. I haven't even talked about the other moves it has. It has a stun attack, which is pretty dangerous too. And then knocks you back, obviously. And then it can move forward, so it kind of, like, disrupts itself. That's, like, the only balancing factor it has against itself. So I guess that's cool. And then the... Goring Flight is interesting because sometimes you get the Hook Pigs and the Hook Pig will move behind it and then it Goring Flights and then the Hook Pig goes again. So it can actually stun lock itself in a really bad dance with the enemy team. I think that's pretty fun. So this enemy is rightfully threatening and I do think it's a good addition. I just wish Cripple Them didn't hit that hard, you know? Like it can, uh, if it crits, I think it crits for 19 or uh, 20 because of how it rounds. So, like, the on-hit damage can do, like, 10, 10, 20. That's already, like, 40 damage. And then it's doing an extra, what, 9 damage on 3 characters in Blight. So that's another, um, like, 70. This thing can do upwards of 60 damage pretty easily, especially if it gets, like, 1 crit. That's frightening. Very scary. And then it can, like, slow your speed down, and then everything else can kill you. So this dude is nuts. And I... If I ever don't go to Champion Warrens, it's because of this enemy. This enemy terrifies me, and I really, I like the design, just cripple them's a little too overtuned. You know, I was thinking about it for a sec, and Quick Draw Bounty Hunter is like the answer to Skyver, and I'm moving on to the Courtyard enemies. The Gatekeeper, this is not the Manservant, this is Gatekeeper, so Gatekeeper is, uh, it's interesting enough. I like that it taunts you with the, the invitation, and then it's kind of like uh, Thrall, where if you don't disarm the bomb basically in a quick enough fashion, it summons a bunch of mosquitoes, which is terrifying. So very cool, gives you something you need. So you do have to fight them, and I like it. Uh, I do like it. I think it's pretty cool. The supplicants are... I always get these backwards. Are these sycophants or supplicants? But these things are... They're solid. I like that they're basically stun immune. They have two attacks, and they do them very well. They they go down easily enough. They don't hang around. They don't outstay their welcome, so they're pretty fun. Mosquitoes, these are stupid enemies, and it's not because they're another example of fast, stress-casting unit. Uh, they're fast. They give you the curse. That sucks. The thing I don't like is that 
Like, this one thing makes me put them in bad when they would probably be in, like, C or B. And it's the fact that once they use the thirst and they get fat and, like, engorged, they don't slow down at all. Like, they don't lower their own speed and dodge. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the female noble from Crimson Court, I think she does something to lower her dodge, and I think the, uh, I think the male one does too. So, it's weird that the mosquito just, like, increases in ten times its size. It's this huge blood bag at that point. And for some reason, it's still just as evasive and fast as it was before. I would like it if it had this kind of system where it would do, like, the thirst and then bombing run, and then it would, like, lose all the blood and shrink down again. I think that would be pretty fun. But it doesn't do that, and the fact that it doesn't, like, get weaker, it just gets stronger <laughs> by drinking blood is pretty ridiculous. And I think that's a missed opportunity. The manservants are pretty cool. Like, this is a very diverse enemy. So it can either die quickly if you just focus fire it, takes like two hits and it's gone, or like one bleed out crit will do it. It, uh, it can move you with Enraging Slight, which is interesting. It can guard, and then it has that one move. I'm pretty sure... Okay, I'm going to double check to make sure I don't like see any bosses. Yeah, see, it gets Gibbering Entourage, where it guards the entire party. That's super cool. And it, I believe it marks itself. Yeah, so it marks itself too by doing that. Very cool. So, like, it, it's a, it's a well-done enemy. This actually might be S-tier. I think it's S-tier, honestly. So, it's cool because it goes from, like... This obnoxious support type unit, and then it transforms, and then it's like super dangerous, it can guard the party. It's fun. It gets an entire new moveset by transforming. I like that. I like that quite a bit, so. Very cool enemy in Manservants. The female nobles, they, uh, they could have been better. They're really forgettable, just because they're not, they're not tanky enough to stick around. Like, you focus fire them just because they're easy and they can thirst you, that's about it. So you just hit them twice, they're easy to stun, then they're out of your hair, and it's it's not that. Nothing to write home about, so they're pretty boring. They, uh, they have some cool moves, they just never get to do them, they just die too fast. And I think that's kind of a missed opportunity. The male nobles, also pretty crappy. Like, these dudes, for the same reason, they're not that threatening. They're actually less threatening than the... Uh, the female nobles in a lot of ways but the fact that they have a cleave they have a very strong cleave that's like what makes them threatening so it's like if you don't get hit by the cleave from these guys they're nothing you know if they get like a good point blank shot or whatever it is their draw pistol i forget what it's called um they're not that dangerous but if they hit you with the the repose cleave yeah that thing is dangerous so it's like they only have one move and they're easy to stun they're easy to corral and i guess you could say that's good design because they're easy to get past, but I'd like to see them actually get to do more and not have to worry. Or I'd like to have more to worry about than this super crit that they have. Or not super crit, the super cleave. Chevaliers. Affectionately called Chevs. Chevs are bastards. Are they A tier? I think they are. Like, they... They're kind of like a madman in a way, where when chevs are on the field, they are dangerous and you are paying attention. They look unassuming, they just sit there on rocks. So it's kind of cool that you can't move them in that way, but they're easy to stun. So I like, I like that the counterplay option is there. And then they cleave you and they stun you. Like they cleave blade, not cleave blade, cleave bleed, and I think cleave stun. I'm gonna double check right here. Okay, so it looks like only the stun can cleave and it doesn't have a crit chance. So that's actually pretty cool. So I think it's pretty good design. But uh, I just wish they had a little more. Like they have a good stun, they have a good bleed attack, they're, they're tanky, they hang around. I like their visual look quite a lot actually. I like all the Crimson Court enemy visual looks, except the mosquitoes, they're pretty boring. So, Chevs, I don't know. I can't put them in A. Like I want to, but I can't. I can't justify it. The, the Husk enemies, these are pretty boring. Uh, this is the regular farmhand dude. It's got two moves. No, wait, three? What does it have? It has heal, it has the melee, and then it has the blight. And the blight's dumb. Like, why does this thing get, like, 17 stress off a of blight attack? That's that's so ridiculous. The horse, one of the worst enemies in the game. Like, why can it stealth? I don't understand why it can stealth. Why can it scramble my entire team? I guess that's just 
ant running through my party. I guess that makes sense, but not fun to fight. Not enough uh, counterplay. The fact that it's like two space means I can't even do stuff like I can with Pelagic Shaman, where if there's a grouper next to Shaman, I can cleave grouper into Shaman. I can't do that with the horse. It just sits there and it takes the entire backline in stealth and then it just hits me and scrambles my party. It's very dumb. Gonna be honest, my voice is starting to go. We are in the home stretch though. The repost rock could have been more, kind of boring, kind of forgettable. You just hit it with Pierce, it's gone. The Scarecrows, interesting in stealth. I think they have a bleed attack. That's pretty cool. They have a stress attack, I believe, too. That weird, like, headbutt they have. Uh, interesting, but still, uh, probably be. It's more interesting than the other farmstead enemies so far. Taskmaster, very cool enemy. So I like the idea of this. I wish more enemies had this. There's a boss and this thing. They're the only things that have the equivalent of, uh... Actually, there might be one more boss, too. But they have the equivalent of, like, a 5th addiction, uh, addiction, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons lair action. So, like, something that happens very early in the turn. And I wish more enemies had that. I think it's pretty cool, because this way it makes Mark better, because it doesn't tick down the turns with extra actions. It also makes damage over time weaker, but also gives them more action economy. So, I, I like that idea. I wish more enemies had that. And we're going to go into the end game enemies. So I'm going to have a little spoiler thing here. So if you don't want to see the end game enemies that aren't bosses, obviously, then I understand. And then I'll... I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I'll think of something. But otherwise, you know, thanks. And I'll see you, I guess, later. And uh, I'm going to get started here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these enemies into tiers. And I'm going to move them back out of tiers to end the video so I don't spoil the other people. The Ascended Brawler is honestly B. So it's like, how does Cultist Brawler get to A? And then, or S, and then Ascended Brawler is B? The reason is there's not enough difference with him to make him interesting. And then it has a six point bleed for some reason. Like, the Cultist Priest has the six point bleed. Like, that's what it's known for, is the finger. And for some reason, this dude has a six point bleed as well. And that kind of diminishes the the specialness of the priest and I just don't like it that much the ascended witch same thing we've seen these enemies their graphical updates are very nice but they're pretty boring like I wish I could have seen something else at the end of the game than like new skins on similar enemies but whatever party boys are s these things are really cool and I like how Red Hook introduces them so you show up and they're just dancing and there's nothing for them to do except guard and heal. So the first time the player goes into Darkest Dungeon 1, they learn how to fight this thing. And it's a very controlled and safe environment. And every team that they're on in the end game, they pull their weight and they're dangerous enough to where like if they get a clutch guard on someone at 2 HP and then heal them after, like that could be bad news. So I like that they're dangerous enough they're hilarious because they just, you know, dance and they look like they're having a good time. It's like the flagellant final form. So I like these a lot. The aesthetic is great. The moveset is simple but very effective. And the place that you find it makes it more special. The Cultist Priest is also S. This thing is very dangerous. It's threatening. It has Merc's energy. It has a cleave. It can cause a lot of stress. It can cause a lot of damage. It's not... It's kind of tanky, but it's not like too tanky to where it wears out its welcome. And I like them quite a bit. And I like the first time you fight them, where they're in the robe and you see like the kind of weird tentacle feet. And you're like, what the hell are these? And then they attack and you see them for like half a second. And then they go back to where they were. I like that a lot. I think it's a great design for an enemy in terms of like the visuals. And then the moveset is simple, but also very dangerous. The growths are fun for what they are, but they're very forgettable. Like, this one, I think, bleeds and stuns. This one, what, guards? So they're kind of, like, they're interesting visually, but their moves don't scream dangerous, especially alongside all their other counterparts, which are way more dangerous. But I guess they're just, like, weird little pieces of flesh on the background that comes into a fight. So that's pretty cool, too. The Flesh Hounds, these suck. They're just, they're boring. They're like worse dogs. Like they're not as fun as the wheel dogs and they, like they, they do some okay damage. They have a ton of HP for what they are. So that's interesting, but they're not, 
They're not that fun. You don't see them that much. They're just like one mission. They don't, you know, there's not too many fights with them, so they're pretty forgettable. And they don't, they don't have like the danger that like a cultist priest has. Even in a group of them, they're still not that dangerous. The polyps are a very cool visual design. I like the two attacks they have, but they're same thing. They're not that dangerous. You don't get to fight them that much, although they are in DD2. Antibody, I'm going to put an A. So I like the idea of the antibody. I think it does what it's supposed to. Like, it's an antibody. It's supposed to prevent, you know, pathogens from infecting the host. And the moveset kind of reflects that. So it's got a stun. Is that all it has? I got to double check, actually. I don't think we care about spoilers at this point, so I'm not going to do the thing where I, uh, you know, censor it. So where... I also like that the wiki always puts the DD enemies at the bottom. Like, it just knows. It doesn't want to ruin this ever. Yeah, they just stun. So that's interesting. I think a blight attack would have been pretty interesting for them too, just to make it more thematic, but, uh... No, they just stun, right? They're just stun bots, dude. They can't be, eh? They're boring. I like the idea. See, I like the idea of an antibody that's blocking the player that's pathogens, but that's about it. So I'm gonna take a sec to move everyone that is spoiler worthy out of the list and then I will go back and I will do an outro and I'll see you after. Okay, it looks like we're spoiler free, so thanks for watching. I hope you like the list. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Uh, the other stuff like Discord, join Discord if you haven't, pledge to Patreon if you want to support the channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, watch me on Twitch, all that awesome stuff. And the Antiquarian Guide is in the works finally. Once the new player guide is fully edited, I have half of a half of it left to go so once that's done then I can work on the antiquarian guide so it should be like one or two weeks after that so maybe not next week but you know two or three weeks in terms of from this date it should be up I know it's taken a while but like I said I'm not the only one working on this so I need to make sure I get it right and that's it for this video so thanks for watching next time more stuff and I'll see you later